People ask me frequently, how do you get those cells? Well, let's talk about that today. First one is Cobalt Teal, that's golden. Psych by this little piggy. Abalone by this little piggy. That's blue, black, or indigo. This is Parakeet by, and Lily Pad together by this little piggy. And that's Storm by this little piggy. Next is a combination of two carbon blacks, one from Amsterdam and the other one is Golden's High Flow. Our cell activators for today. First one's going to be Carbon Black by Amsterdam and Titanium White by Amsterdam. They're mixed with three parts of Australian Floatron. Let's take a second and try to understand why cells are formed. If, with my style of painting, this is she the art. She puts down a pillow pair, uh, pillow paint first. That pillow paint has one job and one job only. It's to hold up the color layer. It is made out of, uh, the, the pillow paint is nothing more than a wall paint that is not too thin and not too thick and stretchy. It needs to stretch out to the, out to the, the sides and hold up my color layers. Now the color layers started out as uh, as clear house paint but then I added my pigments to to make the colors that they need to be now there's there's two components of the pouring medium I'll get into that another day but that is simply its job it is uh, lighter than the pillow paint but not as light as the last layer. Now the last layer is our cell activator. Cell activator comprises of two things. And that's what causes the cells. The first thing is the paint that you use. Now I like to use a very uh, highly pigmented uh, paint for this. So in today's case, it's going to be an Amsterdam titanium white and the Amsterdam carbon black. Uh, mixed with that are going to be the three parts of, uh, of Australian flow trial that I talked about. Now, because of the chemical properties uh, of the Australian flow trial mixed with this high density paint, uh, this highly pigmented paint, it causes, although it looks more fluid, it's actually more dense. And as the the paint goes onto the surface of my color layer, it will begin to sink. And you'll that's what how the cells are formed. So let's get back to painting. Okay, the first thing down is going to be my Glinton Essentials in eggshell. This is the pillow paint that I talked about earlier. And start, uh, first off, I'm just trying to get it centered and get it uh, in position and then bringing the weight of the paint back into the center where I want it the thickest at least to start with. Okay, this is uh, the parakeet lily pad combination. And I'm gonna put down a healthy amount here. Um, I think in retrospect, I probably would put less next time. This is Storm. It's a, it, this gray is so useful. It creates uh, some contrast that just, I haven't seen anything else that works as well as this. And I love the sheen of it. Okay, this is Psych by this little piggy. At least I believe it is. No, this is Psych. The one you just saw was the uh, Cobalt Turquoise. And this is the color layer. The color layer is sitting now on top of the pillow paint. The pillow paint is holding it up. Okay. This is the Abalone. The abalone is a, it looks blue here, a very light blue, which it is. But also has a very, is a very fine gold. So it's, it's an amazing color. Okay, this is the back of my, it's a pastry cutter. I'm using, this is the blue black by Artillier Interactive. And all I'm doing is I'm just trying to get it so that it's right there at the edge so that when I start to pour it off of this, it'll, it'll go down nice and evenly.
I had some bubbles in this I had to deal with and I did that off camera. Uh, I generally don't like the torch, but because I had so many bubbles this time, I lightly torched. I just didn't get very close to it because scorching the paint is extremely easy. I'm just about done putting this down. This is real time, so this is how long it took. Okay, I picked up my carbon black, and I'm putting down a lot more for this one because I want to cover this whole this whole surface, just like I did with the first one. Just evenly putting it across the surface of the paint, covering up my color layers underneath. This technique was developed it by uh, by Jessica Winterstrom uh, was Winterstrom art and her she, she's the master of this technique okay now I'm just centering it back bringing it back trying to get the weight of the paint where it needs to be pick up my I'm gonna pick up my uh, hair dryer here that's my diffuser on it I was hoping that it would work and unfortunately it just doesn't so I took it off and I went with the regular way you'll see that here in just a second this is a flat-headed hair dryer it works beautifully for so many things I uh, I am gonna be trying to find my old hair dryer to experiment with it to see how I like the difference between the two now that it's been a while so there you go now I'm getting some some movement in the color there it's about here that I realized oh why am I not getting cells I hadn't put my cell activator on yet it's okay no harm no fall because I really hadn't pulled too much paint across first down is that the carbon black and now some of the titanium white and came back in with the carbon black on the other side of it blow across, you'll immediately start see those cells open up. It's actually, I've been doing this now for years and every time that happens, it gives me kind of a, kind of a thrill. I just love it, how it works. Now you notice that because I have enough paint down, I got pretty close to the sides already. So it's taken me a long time to figure out how much paint I need to do this with. And this hide and reveal is what I was going for later, or earlier, is a technique that is, I, it just is the cat's meow. I don't know how else to say it. I love it. Okay, this is my mini blower. The middle of that was just not, it wasn't opening up for me and I didn't want to leave it the way it was. So uh, rather than pulling up a straw and putting my head in the in the frame, I'm using the mini, mini blower. Organically speaking, the cells in the middle, I love for them to be part of the initial blow. Mainly because when you bring in a, after the fact, the cells are different. They look different and they'll act different. They'll sink differently. So it's always best to get it done all in one shot with the, with the blower. But in this case, it's what it is. And it's, I'll let you be the judge of what you think of the piece. Okay. It's time to spin. This first spin is just nice and light, just to open up the cells and see what I have and see what I want to try to do with the composition. Because this is a, this is a, basically, it went everywhere uh, as far as the cells and the, the, the composition for it. I just kind of let it be. It's going to be a bloom style, a very dark bloom style, 
but uh, it is not quite a blue. I think it cut a little bit out through this section coming up because I spun for quite some time. The whole idea behind spinning, once you have your composition in place and you start spinning faster, is to get the paint off the surface. Checking the depth of it, see, it's not bad. That's I could leave it right where it's at. I think I spun a few more times, and let's do the flyover. You see, I got some beautiful cells. I got some nice peacock cells there, and I don't think I could be only any. any I, I'm really happy with this piece. I hope that it dries well. I want to thank you very much for being here today. And I really do hope you got something out of this. And if you could, come on back, watch some more, and tell your friends. If you haven't done so, subscribe and ring that bell so you know when things come out. So until next time, bye for now.